I want to say this on blogs. I want to say this on Facebook. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the most unique and interesting runway categories from RuPaul's Drag Race and its All-Stars variation. I have blue tears coming directly out of my eyes. I can't see anything except for cyan. Number 20, Angelic White. This proved that even the simplest ideas can garner the most gorgeous results. After the roast and fake funeral of Lady Bunny, Rue decided to continue the bit by having everybody hit the stage in their most angelic attire. Category is angelic white. There was no shortage of spectacular white gowns, and everyone who wore one looked beautiful. However, a few queens added their unique spin. Naomi Smalls stunned in a Prince-inspired look, complete with a guitar, while Monet Exchange wowed the judges in an extraordinary Pope-like outfit. It even came with a long train and bedazzled miter. Just goes to show that no matter how straightforward the prompt seems, some queens will find a way to make it their own. America, I am giving you angelic white realness, serving you Josephine Baker mixed with Michael the Archangel. It's beautiful. Number 19, wigs on wigs on wigs. Damn, girl. Somebody just graduated from the Lace Front Institute of Technology. Yeah, <laughs> L-I-T. L-I-T. It's lit. <laughs> this category isn't just fun. It's also apparently a reference to season five's Whip My Hair lip sync when Roxy Andrews delivered a sickening wig reveal. The All-Stars three competitors were tasked with showing off their own surprise hair, ranging from straightforward to hilarious. Aja in particular had the genius idea to hold up a cutout of giant anime hair before dropping it to uncover her wigs. Meanwhile, Trixie Mattel and Ben de la Creme opted to display new outfits along with their hair pieces. And who could forget the campy delight that was Shangela coming out as an ear of corn? Overall, it was a fun twist and the perfect homage to a classic moment from the show. Corn is something that will forever be associated with me. Look, I'm from the country and I keep it real. Nothing says that better than corn. Number 18, Chaps on the Runway. Chaps can somehow make even the simplest look seem trendy, and the queens definitely showcased how to infuse them with both chicness and sexiness. The main standout was Lady Camden, who pretended to trip and lose her wig, only to reveal a mustache instead. Oh, 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 uh oh. You okay? Oh, shoot. Face first, this is every drag queen's nightmare. Surprise! That she was able to take such a prompt and give it an iconic reveal is a testament to her undeniable creativity. Of course, everyone else came through in Slate as well. Diabetes business suit and Bosco's hippie-inspired garb showed the versatility of chaps as an accessory that can complement everything. This theme allowed everyone to feel comfortable and confident in themselves, which is an automatic win in our book. Baby, I am feeling like I am in Studio 54 right now. Baby, I feel so lovely. I got my bone straight hair. Uh -oh. I feel like share in the future. Number 17, Night of a Thousand RuPaul's. While there have been many Night of a Thousand categories on the show, the original honored the diva herself, RuPaul. This theme not only allowed each queen to model their own version of an iconic Ru look, it also provided the audience with insight into the host's history. I wore this outfit to the VH1 Fashion Awards. Yes, you yes, did. Bob Mackey. A majority opted for her well-known dresses while slightly tweaking them. Bianca in particular pointed out that she was dressed as an age-appropriate version of the star. I am serving age-appropriate Rue. I'm giving Rue realness now, and I'm feeling good. However, it was Milk who blew everyone out of the water by daring to wear a suit and bald cap to portray workroom Rue. While she got some pushback, Milk's normalization of traditional masculine garments allowed future queens to confidently rock pants of their own. Number 16, the color purple. Themes centered around colors are always stunning, and what better choice than that of royalty? This season 12 challenge showed how just one hue could inspire people in different ways. There were so many different representations of the color and drag itself. We had gorgeous garments like Jada Essence Halls that showed just how polished pageant drag can be. On the flip side, Gigi pulled off a stellar reference to Daphne from Scooby-Doo, while Jackie Cox stood out as a fashionable version of the Purple People Eater. The first thing I think of when I hear the word purple is that song. The one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Each interpretation showed off a different facet of the art form, speaking to how valid and sickening they all are. Regardless of the creative direction they took, every single queen looked drop-dead gorgeous. 
Number 15. The Pleather Principle The all-winter season was a fashion showcase, and the Pleather Principle runway was just the tip of the iceberg. When one thinks of pleather, they may think of classic leather jackets or pants. However, it was clear from the beginning that these queens were not taking the easy route. This week on the runway, I wanted to serve something from my inner child. I was obsessed with anime growing up. Twinning! Whether they went for bright, vivid colors or a darker palette, these legends presented a set of seductive and stylish outfits. Clearly, everyone had polished their aesthetics to a T, and it was genuinely inspiring to be able to witness their growth in real time. This runway was the perfect introduction to All Star 7, pairing perfectly with the strong snatch game that preceded it to give us one of the season's most beloved episodes. It's, it's so wonderful to be here. It's, <laughs> it's wonderful to be anywhere, really. Yes. You know, I've been dead for quite some time. <laughs> Number 14. Animal Kingdom Couture The Animal Kingdom is vast, and many of the creatures within it are naturally patterned. This makes it a fantastic concept for a runway category. Each contestant showcased their creativity by donning costumes which transformed them into different creatures. Critters of all sizes were represented, from elephants to flies, offering everyone a chance to step outside their comfort zones. Michelle, I didn't want to say this, but there's an elephant in the room. Yes. <laughs> Bianca drifted from her regular aesthetic, adopting a fierce leopard look with matching face paint, while Trinity stunned in a Phoenix-inspired ensemble. But it was Courtney Act who topped the spectacle with a massive pair of eagle wings that fanned out at the perfect moment. Mm -hmm. wow. Look at the size of those wings. Yes. Prepare for takeoff. It's times like this that demonstrate why season six was so well loved. Number 13. Eloquence After Dark. A classic elegant gown will never go out of fashion. The girls got to show off their sophisticated style as they sauntered down the runway in gorgeous dresses. They all managed to adjust it to their own personal style, such as Trinity the Tuck's hip cutouts and Naomi Small's avant-garde edge. This is Naomi Small serving you very VIP heavy metal reflective. Now I know where my car sunscreens went. Mo Hart even incorporated an equally stunning nude illusion. However, even those who kept things simple were still dressed to the nines. It was an opportunity for everyone to maximize their joint sleigh, and they definitely succeeded. Baby, I'm serving old Hollywood glam, feeling my eloquence, eleganza, extravaganza. This being an all-star season meant that everyone got to show how much their eye for style had evolved since their original appearance on the show. Number 12. Bearded and Beautiful After Milk's surprising beard reveal in Season 6, RuPaul asked her queens to lend their own glamour to facial hair. Oh dear. Now I've heard of a milk mustache, but… Honey. Trixie Mattel took the opportunity to blend the romance of a mythical goddess with a beard ripped straight from Jesus. Mrs. Kasha Davis rocked an intriguingly androgynous outfit, while Violet Tchotchke's retro look questioned traditional gender imagery. Though Kennedy's scruff was a bit rugged, Jasmine Masters decided to just draw a stubble on her face. Spacey creations like Candy Ho's avant-garde Fu Manchu and Pearl's Crimson Shards also lent some surreal qualities to the week's selections. This update on a once-criticized outfit decision showed ingenuity from contestants and open minds from the judges. I am trying so hard to remain elegant with this beard, but I am selling it. Who knew I was a model? Number 11. Mermaid Fantasy Mermaids are some of the most alluring and enigmatic mythological entities, making them the perfect inspiration for a runway category. My mermaid look is heavy metal and reflective. I am spray painted, I am sequenced, I am every girly thing that I would usually avoid, but I just wanted to feel full fantasy. To keep the fantasy, everyone wore a tail and was pushed down the runway in a wheelchair. You'd think that this would diminish their presentations, but instead, it made the small details pop even more. Asia O'Hara made a splash, literally, with her fish mask, and Aquaria showed a dark yet realistic depiction of a modern mermaid caught in an oil spill. This look brought to you by the Exxon Valdez. Black gold, <laughs> Texas tea. Queens like Cameron Michaels, on the other hand, opted to display the classic beauty of these fictional characters. Regardless of the route they took, they all served in their own way, and definitely made the undersea beauties proud. Number 10. What's Your Sign? This is a fan favorite, and it's clear to see why. The contestants had the opportunity to showcase their interpretation of their respective zodiac signs on the main stage. Goats are very agile. And that's very much my personality. I thrive in rough terrain. With 12 different options available, the queens certainly had a large pool to choose from. Even if a sign was repeated, 
it still managed to be translated differently. Each competitor demonstrated an impressive attention to detail, highlighting just how much thought and care they put into the theme. Vanessa Vanji Mateo stole the spotlight in her Libra regalia, complete with a giant scale hanging from her head. Vanessa Vanji Mateo, Libra. Now this is a balanced look. The category was so well received that some fans can't help but hope it'll be recycled, or should we say recycled, in a future season. Number 9. Club Kid Couture it's always a treat when the show references another facet of LGBTQIA culture. Club kids are a staple in the community's history, with RuPaul herself having been one in her youth. They had an influence on like every type of drag, beauty drag, pageant drag, it all has, I think, felt the legacy of the club kids. They were known for their eclectic and fashion-forward attire, so to say that people were excited about it is an understatement. The queens themselves were ecstatic, and even discussed the performers' importance to not only the club scene, but fashion in general. It was an underground party culture that really pushed the boundaries of queer aesthetics. It didn't just shift drag, it shifted fashion. On the main stage, they each showed off their rendition of the assignment, and the result was everything. Each was an homage to the subculture in some way, with standouts including Shay's Lee Bowery-inspired attire and Peppermint, who incorporated her own name into her overall presentation. Number 8. Two Looks in One Violet Tchotchke's outfit within an outfit on season 7 shocked Carson Kressley and spawned a runway theme driven by reveals. Looking smart oh, and oh, tartan. Getting a reveal. Yeah. Oh. oh, God. Oh. oh! Bay City Roller. Whereas most queens merged two costumes, Detox evolved a short dress into a coat and then a club ready unitard. Oh, yeah! Oh, and there's more. Every time I step on the runway, I want it to be something different. I want to blow them away. Oh! And that's the fun of drag to me. Roxy Andrews followed a Spanish theme with her flamenco look, which she transformed into a Latina pop star ensemble. Oh! Selena in the house. Hello. If anybody knows anything about a reveal, she, me, her, she does. I'm serving Latina diva on this runway. The combat-ready look from Fifi only got fancier when it burst into a gold ball gown. That's a nice ascot. Ah, yes. I'm super proud of this look. I came up with the design myself, and I feel gorgeous. Alaska's nightmarish mass of black cloth left the panel lost for words until she emerged as Lil Pound Cake. <laughs> it's Lil Pound Cake! <laughs> Whether it was motif consistency or unexpectedly perfect combinations, everyone had their own take on this theme. I'm ready for my close-up. Girl, please, I've taken selfie to a whole nother level. Paparazzi who? Oh, I see why you love me, darling. Number 7. Fantasy Hair Extravaganza The first two rounds of Rue's hair-themed fashion show were pretty standard, and their locks simply accented certain styles. I have a powdered wig going. I have my little, like, curls on the side. And I'm feeling fierce, and the judges are living. Oh, look at all of the cameos. And look at the candelabra in her hair. The last category, however, asked for an outfit made out of wigs. The sheer range of colors and candy-inspired details from Raja was totally unbelievable. There was plenty of buzz around Manila's bee costume, and Shangela's ragged warrior had its own furry weapon. Jada Sofia went above and beyond with her hairy bra, and she gave new meaning to poodle skirts. It's like a scorpion on the top. I feel so fabulous. Sophia's additional leaning beehive and curly purse also left us gagging. All these outside-the-box interpretations on the fantasy hair extravaganza wow judges as much as viewers. Thighs wide open. Yes, hunty. Wild, <laughs> wild west. Miss Kitty never looked so good. Number 6. Post-apocalyptic. Season 4 had an impressive start thanks to a challenge that mixed garbage with a lot of glam. You've got three minutes to grab what you can and avoid being eaten alive. LaShawn Beyond's towering hat was only outdone by her elegantly stitched dress. There was a regal power to Fifi's garb that was reminiscent of a Tina Turner look. Willem shredded a predictable beauty queen getup to make it look like she'd escaped an explosion. Though Chad and Milan delivered style, no one could hold a candle to Sharon Needle's stellar disco zombie. While it could have been as silly as the derelict fashion line from Zoolander, the post-apocalyptic category inspired some of the fiercest looks we've seen across the entire franchise. The best part was slowly letting out a giant mouthful of fake blood all over my body, and that's when I really saw Rue's eyebrow raise. Number 5. 
all glowed up. When the all winter season was first announced, the expectations for everyone's style were already high. This idea took those expectations and exceeded them. For this episode, the queens got to strut the stage in glow-in-the-dark ensembles, resulting in one of the most elevated runways ever. Seeing the transformation from a seemingly normal outfit to a radiant display of bright lights was truly breathtaking. I'm serving you nothing but the brightest, most sickening mermaid fantasy. I'm glowing like I were working in Vegas selling you on Treasure Island. A couple even incorporated the bulbs into their wigs, creating a more immersive experience. Each individual concept was meticulously thought out and perfectly executed. But we have to shout out Jinx, whose historical reference to the witch trials left an indelible mark. So while I am a witch being burned alive, I'm going to show that the flames don't hurt me and do not diminish my power. Suffice it to say, there wasn't a single boot to be found among this lineup of champions. Number 4. Half Man, Half Queen With the feminine focus that usually goes into Drag Race, the Half Man, Half Queen theme pushed everyone to up the testosterone levels. For the first time in Drag Race history, you'll be decked out in Half Man and Half Queen drag. For Ginger Minja's Western aesthetic, this meant tassels, rhinestones, and facial hair that stopped right down the middle of her face. While Trixie Mattel's cowboy didn't tie in well with her cowgirl, each character was beautifully defined when she was filmed in profile. Kennedy did a great job contrasting each gender, and Pearl used her makeup to create a visual split between her roles. Violet was one of the few contestants to wear opposing footwear, and her mustache was a simple but effective touch. The dance challenge highlighted the strengths of each appearance as well, bringing some extra fun to this gender-bending episode. Number 3. Hello Kitty Hello Kitty! <laughs> hey Kitty girl, come on down here! Konnichiwa, bitches! <laughs> For Katya's unique version of a Hello Kitty doll, she created a comically tacky babushka who loved socialism. Pearl's Madonna-influenced gangster kitty was equally goofy, while Kennedy even tried to fit her personal look to the kitty theme. With her lovely meat tag earring, Ginger's southern cow took advantage of other animals from the Japanese brand. Violet built a beautiful headpiece out of merchandise for the second part of the theme, and turned pins into jewel-like details. Though Katya designed a luscious catsuit, Kennedy's Catwoman outfit tied into the Hello Kitty products much better. Interestingly enough, Pearl stood out for her minimalistic use of pink memorabilia. The creative results of the Hello Kitty challenge showed viewers that brand-heavy runways could still be exciting. She woke up like that. <laughs> Actually, she literally slept in that. <laughs> <laughs> Number 2. Latex Extravaganza Rubber hit the runway on the second week of All Stars 2 for looks that were skin tight and visually distinct. While Roxy Andrews created a Janet Jackson style frock, Alaska transformed her black latex into something out of a futuristic dance club. Um, nine parts supermodel and one part robot, and ready for insertion. Alyssa Edwards started in black too, but her yellow dress reveal was loud and preppy. Fifi O'Hara even added some rubber duck jewelry to her ensemble to highlight its nautical aesthetic. Detox brought a rare thigh gap to the show in her stunning red suit, and sported a matching headpiece as well. With its glossy fabric and plenty of sex appeal, the latex extravaganza put form to the forefront. She's into water sports. Oh, it's Esther Williams' cousin, Fister Williams. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at those breaststrokes. Our cycles are synchronized. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are are some honorable mentions. Beat It. The queens took to the stage in intricate beaded looks, ranging from classy to campy. I'm a 1920s flapper on Bourbon Street. I really wanted to take a bulky material like Mardi Gras beads, but still make it slimming and sophisticated and classy. Black Wedding. This theme took the classic bridal runway and gave it a fun, dark twist. My inspiration is a beautiful bride waiting for her husband to come back from war. Tani, are you coming back? I received the letter. He's been killed in combat. The Black Wedding has become a funeral. Feathers. Feathers of every shade and hue were represented in this fun yet glamorous runway. Wearing a black feather dress with six of crows, and they're just flying to me because I'm the queen of the crows. I feel amazing. Last ball on Earth. The contestants served three different looks centered around drag at the end of the world. I have the cold, frozen heart of our leader who wound us up in this mess because he wouldn't pay attention to global warming. No yaks were hurt in the making of this gown, I promise. Puffa, please. 
the season 15 queens wowed the judges in looks inspired by puffer jackets. I am serving the most iconic puffer look that I could think of, the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Woman. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Death Becomes Her To bring humor and elegance to the afterlife, Ginger Minge placed herself in a bearskin and used entrails as a necklace. I am serving you baby bear realness, honey. I give a little spin, I strike a little pose, I give a little growl. Though Katya was already a sickening captain with flashy sequins, her half-eaten shark foot was a hilarious touch. Pearl also had us in tears when she roasted Kennedy's confusing animalistic outfit. After a night of hooking, I got attacked and thrown in the fire and crystallized. So I come out a fierce Glamazon drag queen, honey. Jaden told a surprisingly detailed story for her prison zombie and gave her barbed wire details intriguing depth. What had happened was I got put in jail and then I tried to escape to go see my baby daddy. And I didn't quite make it over that fence. It is criminal to look that good. Uh -huh. Violet risked her life for fashion with a cinch so unbelievably tight that Ariana Grande screamed at the reveal. <gasps> oh my god. I'm numb from the waist down, tuck included. I really could die, bitch. I'm giving you realness. She's got a smaller waist than Barbie. Oh, don't sneeze, honey. It's all gonna pop. Amazing. Between blood, weapons, and body parts, Death Becomes Her has cemented itself as one of the most memorable themes in Drag Race history. She's got a splitting headache. The last time I'll eat at Benihana. Which category do you think the queen slayed the hardest? Let us know in the comments. This is everything. Flow like a butterfly, sting like a bee. <laughs> yeah. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.